Consecrate me now to thy service, O Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, the pure delight of the single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneeled in prayer and with thee, my God, we commune as friends. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. bless you, Lord, and ask for comfort. And we ask for your guidance. We give you praise and thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> By now, many of you have uh, had a friend that had got sick. Maybe you had a friend that died or a family member. I'm sorry. 
but the God of all comfort is with us, and you can call on him any time. I wanted to talk a little bit about drawing nearer to the Lord and how it's not as easy as some folks might think. For some of us, especially me, it took a lot of times trying before I finally stuck. If you've ever tried to quit cigarettes, you probably didn't quit smoking the first time. You might have had to quit several times before it took. If you ever had to quit drinking, whew, I don't know how many times I quit before I finally quit. And you learn along the way. For many of us, following Jesus was more of a progression where we, where we followed and fell behind and followed and fell behind. But we kept coming back. This is a story about a, a guy that came back. He just kept coming back. We first meet him when he's not even named. In Luke chapter 22, it says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house, where he entereth in. And you shall say unto the goodman of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber that I <coughs> shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said, and they made ready for the Passover. So there was a young man, it just says there was a man, but they took him to the good man of the house, the older man. And this young man was John Mark because the house that they went to where they eventually had the Passover meal became famous as the Upper Room and which was owned by Mark's mother and her brother who later was with the apostles. His name was Barnabas. But they're not named yet. They're named later. Then another, next time we see this young man uh, he is a uh, we find him in the garden of Jesus when the soldiers came and took him. They were in the garden of Gethsemane. The soldiers came and it says, they all forsook him and fled, all the disciples. And looky here, it says, And there followed him a certain young man. He obviously wasn't a regular because it said the disciples had left him. There followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young men laid hold on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. He was scared and ran away. We can't blame him for deserting Jesus here because everybody else deserted him. But it says that there was a young man that followed them. Where did he follow them from? He followed them from the house where they had the Passover meal. And this is John Mark. This account of this young man fleeing naked. It also you know, tells me that you know, if you're going to get arrested, you probably need to wear more clothes because... You know, you might get cold in the jailhouse, but he just had like a linen cloth around him. and it, It's like uh, when the disciples and Jesus left the upper room in the middle of the night, this boy woke up and he just wrapped his, wrapped his blanket or his sheet around him and, and went off and followed him, wanted to find out what they were doing. 
This is John Mark. This is Mark. It only appears in the Gospel of Mark. It doesn't appear anywhere else. And uh, how would he have known such an intimate detail? It wasn't there. Now, granted, the Holy Ghost could have told him about it, and he could have written it down, but uh, it's not shared by any of the other New Testament writers. Only Mark. He ran away. But, look here. He came back. In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about 120. They were all together. They continued in one accord in prayer uh, with women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his bedroom, with his brethren. And they were in the upper room, according to verse 13. There was about 120 of them. He's not named there, but he obviously came back and was among them. Then we find out in Acts chapter 12, he finally gets a name. Because we're returning to the same place, the same house, the same upper room, the same people. Now Peter's in jail. An angel lets him out of jail. Herod has cut off James the Apostle's head and he plans on doing it to Peter the next day. So this angel breaks Peter out of jail. I don't know how it worked out that way. Probably the Lord said, hmm, you know, Simon Peter is sitting down there in jail and I'm going to need him later to write 1 Peter and 2 Peter, so I better get him out of jail before old Herod cuts his head off. Anyway, Peter busted out of jail. The angel delivered him. Then he goes to the brethren. He goes to the brethren. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered and praying. That's where we see him again. And he finally gets a name. Now, when the apostle Paul... When he, after he gets saved, he has his Damascus Road encounter with Jesus. And then, uh, and then he comes back after, after he's been with the apostles and he goes back to Tarsus for a while and Barnabas goes and fetches him back. Uh, they're working in the church in Antioch. And, and they decide that they're going to go on a missionary trip. And they're going, to, they're going to go and preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And in, in verse 13, in chapter 13 of the Acts, it says, Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia. And, excuse me, I'm sorry, let's back up just a little bit. Let's back up just a little bit to verse 5. When they departed, it says that they also had John to their minister. This was to John Mark, not the Apostle John, because the Apostle John was still at Jerusalem with James, the Lord's half-brother. Now, had John as their minister. So he definitely has come back. He is there with him. He's on the missionary trip. But then he messes up. It says, When Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. It means John Mark. Well, don't know why he went back to Jerusalem. We only know that he went back. Now, maybe, you know, maybe he had a girlfriend, and maybe she was missing him. Maybe he was afraid some other guy would marry her if he didn't go home. Uh, maybe he was a mama's boy. Maybe he just wanted a home-cooked meal. We don't know. We're not told. He just leaves and goes back. In the interest of time, I'll clue you in now until before I get to the verse, he was Barnabas' nephew. And Barnabas is traveling with Paul at this time on this missionary trip. And so the uncle has to kind of bear the embarrassment that his nephew had bugged out on them and didn't finish the trip. Now, a couple of years later, Paul and Barnabas are talking about going on another trip. Now, this makes one 
two times that John Mark has split. He has just fled. First time he came back. Now the second time he came back. How do we know he came back? Because Barnabas wants to take him with him again on the next missionary trip. In, in chapter 15 of Acts, at the end, it says, Now some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with him, who had departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them, between Barnabas and Paul, who were ministry partners, that they departed asunder from one another. They had a divorce. They split up. They divided the assets, as it were. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, uh, being recommended to the brethren by the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches. We never hear about Barnabas again. You know, Barnabas, when Paul first got saved and he, he left Damascus and he came back to Jerusalem and he wanted to see the apostles, they wouldn't believe that he was a Christian. But guess who brought Paul to the apostles? It was Barnabas. Uh, when uh, when Paul had been in Tarsus for three years about and Barnabas needed help in the growing church at Antioch in Syria who did he go get? it was Paul he went and fetched Paul he, saw, he sailed across the, 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 the Mediterranean and went to Tarsus and got Paul and brought him back with him and they worked together in that church. On the very first missionary trip that we have a record of that Paul took to the Gentiles, it was Barnabas that he took with him. They split up. We never hear anything about the life of Barnabas again. But as we get along in Paul's life and he gets older, we're going to see that we're going to see that, that Mark hooked up with Paul again. Because when, he's, when Paul is in jail, he writes a letter to the church at Colossae. And he tells them a few things. He says uh, at the end of his letter when he's saying hi from everybody, you know how, remember when we used to write letters, it's a lost art, but when you get to the end of the letter and we'd say, well, you know, Aunt Mary says hi, and Uncle John says hi, and we hope you're all doing well. Well, Paul did the same thing at the end of his letters, and he says, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you, and Marcus, Mark, sister's son to Barnabas, which means that uh, was Barnabas' nephew. And, of course, we already know that John Mark's mother was Mary, touching whom you receive commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. Now, not only is Mark coming to the prison, this is Nero's dungeon. Paul is in jail in Rome when he writes this letter. Mark is attending him in that jail. He's probably carrying letters back and forth to the churches and help Paul administer the churches and encourage the churches and write to the churches while he's there in prison. He's helping Paul with the ministry. Not only is he there helping Paul with the ministry, Paul writes in the letter, he says, now, if he comes to you, receive him, because it'll be the same thing as if I came. Uh, I, I'm using Mark. This was the same guy that he wouldn't take with him on the missionary journey 15 plus years before, because, uh, and, and the split was, the, 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 Contention was so bad that he split with Barnabas over it, Mark's uncle. So we know he's come back again. He left, he came back, he left, he came back. And now not only has he come back, he's come back to his original father in the faith, his original teacher, his original mentor, the Apostle Paul. 
And Paul is saying, if he comes, receive him. He's here with me. That's not all. He writes another letter to Philemon. Now Philemon, li uh, Philemon lived in Colossae, and this was probably written at the same time that the letter to the Colossians was written. But at the end of the letter, he does it again. When he writes to Philemon, he says, Marcus and Aristarchus and Demas and Lucas, my fellow laborers, they, they all salute you. Marcus is one of them. These last letters, see, whenever he wrote a letter, he mentioned Mark. Paul knew he was going to die soon, and he wanted people to know that Mark was with him. He left and he came back. He left and he came back. He left with Uncle Barnabas and he finally came back to Paul. We don't know what happened to Barnabas. But Mark kept coming back. And Paul began to use him. And not only use him, but to recommend him and endorse him. This is a guy with a water pitcher 30 years before. 35 years before outside of the upper room where Jesus had the last Passover meal and instituted the Lord's Supper. This is the same Mark that was in the garden, wrapped up in a bed sheet and ran away naked because everybody else ran away from Jesus. It's the same Mark that left the work in Pamphylia it was the same mark that caused the split between Barnabas and Paul. But he came back. He just kept coming back. Did he come back because of Paul? No, he came back because of Jesus. And the, what Paul happened is Paul recognized that Jesus was using Mark in the work. He realized he used him with Barnabas. He realized that he had used him in the years in between and Mark had become such a minister of the gospel that he took notice of Mark and Paul brought him into his inner circle there at the end when he was in Nero's dungeon. I would take that endorsement any day. And the last letter that Paul wrote that we know about, he wrote to Timothy, 2 Timothy. And at the end of the letter, he's saying to Timothy, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. And then dig this. Take Mark. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable unto me for the ministry. Take Mark and bring him unto me. You know, and all this running around, all this running around that he did, that Mark did, and he was with Paul at the end, he was also with Peter at the end. Because when Peter is writing his letters just before Nero crucifies him upside down in Rome, Peter, at the end of 1 Peter, he's writing a letter and he says, The church that is at Babylon elected together with you saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son. He came back. He came back and made himself so devoted to the gospel ministry and so addicted to the service to the saints that he was not only useful to the apostle, to the Gentiles, but also the apostle to the circumcision, Peter himself. I love this, what Paul wrote, because Paul, he was cantankerous, he was thorny, he was prickly. And Mark had crossed him. But here he is at the end of his life saying, Take Mark and bring him to me. 
because he's profitable to me for the ministry. He came back. I'm talking to people right now who have left the side of Jesus and want to come back. I'm talking to people now who have been in ministry and are out of ministry and they would love to come back but don't know how. You know how to come back to Jesus? You just come back. You just come back. You just stop what you're doing and you turn to Him and you say, Lord, you're right and I'm wrong. And he'll do the rest and he'll use you. Mark came back. I came back. You can come back too. Never ask God to use you. Just pray that you can be usable. Oh, but you have to make one little decision. You have to make a decision. You have to decide this. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. But turn back, you can come back. Come back to him now.